Hello everyone! Welcome back to Mel Shelves! I am Melanie and welcome to my channel. So today's video we are going to do a this or that Lucy Foley. So I have my most recent Lucy Foley read, The Paris Apartment, and I have my first Lucy Foley read, The Guest List. So which one did I prefer? Did I like both of them? Is there one that I didn't like? Let's dive in. We'll start with my most recent read, The Paris Apartment. The synopsis says, Jess needs a fresh start. She's broke and alone, and she's just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. Her half-brother, Ben, didn't sound thrilled when she asked if she could crash with him for a bit, but he didn't say no. And surely everything will look better from Paris. Only when she shows up to find a very nice apartment, could Ben really afford this? He's not there. The longer Ben stays missing, the more Jess starts to dig into her brother's situation and the more questions she has. Ben's neighbors are an eclectic bunch and not particularly friendly. Jess may have come to Paris to escape her past, but it's starting to look like it's Ben's future that's in doubt. Everyone's a neighbor, everyone's a suspect, and everyone knows something they're not telling. Pretty intriguing, huh? Now let's take a look at the synopsis for the guest list. It's the wedding of the year, but someone won't survive it. On a remote island off the coast of Ireland, guests gather to celebrate the wedding of Jules Keegan and Will Slater. Will is a rising television star, handsome and charming. Jules is a smart, ambitious magazine publisher. Though the sea is a little choppy and the cell service spotty, their wedding is everything you'd expect of a young power couple. Designer dress, four-tiered cake, boutique whiskey, vintage champagne. Every detail has been curated to perfection, and all that's left to orchestrate is the happiness. But perfection is for plans, and people are all too human. It's not long after the cake is cut and the champagne popped that resentments and petty jealousies come out. Worse yet, the latest barometer reading shows the weather has shifted from fair to changeable and dark clouds are looming overhead. Everyone on the island has a secret. Everyone has a motive and someone won't leave the wedding alive. So both really good synopsises, really intriguing plots, but... For me, out of the two, the guest list took the cake. I really enjoyed the setting. It's dark, it's eerie. They are on a remote island, beautiful old historic kind of mansion and friends are showing up, friends that some haven't seen each other in a while. Some are bringing people that are kind of new to the group, but really, really good. You obviously know someone dies. What you don't know throughout the entire book is who is dead. So it's got a little bit of a twist. So it's kind of cool to try and figure out, one, who is not alive, two, who killed them and why. And the end does kind of break my heart a little bit, but you'll have to read it to find out why for yourself because I'm kind of like, ah, uh, that's all I can say. Ah, uh, but I still liked the ending even though usually eh, endings can kind of be that way because they've completely went off the rails and it's a twist I don't love and it didn't end right. But no, this one ended good. Just a little eh moment. So definitely a good one. The Paris apartment is still good. I didn't not like it. I didn't, I obviously finished it. I just had a harder time getting into the family dynamic in the story um, and some of the elements of the characters that are in the living in the apartment building. So as you read, I kind of figured this one out pretty early on, pretty quickly. I'd be curious to know if you did as well, if you've read it and if you are going to read it, what are your thoughts as you're reading it? Do you think you know what's going on? Do you think you know different connections to different people and different places and maybe what happened to Ben. But 
I really did like the sister, the main character in here. I kind of like her spunk. She's a little spunky. She's fun. She's got a chip on her shoulder that she's trying to get figured out. And so I did really enjoy her character. It's just some of the outliner characters that were a little hard for me. Uh, I will go ahead and tell you this just because my head went like completely off rail for a minute. And I thought maybe one of the characters was like a ghost or invisible or she, that was not the case. Just know that that was my own little brain. So if you start thinking that that's not true, all the characters are real. They're all real people. There's no ghost story element to really either of these books. So if you're going to pick one of the two, I would go with this instead of that. But I do recommend reading them both especially if you've never tried Lucy Foley yet. Great reads, especially if you love something suspenseful, a little bit of a thriller edge. And that's it for today's edition of Mel's Shelves. So back up they go. The Paris apartment goes here. So this is the side of my bookshelves that some of these books might not stay. I usually only buy books once I've read and liked them or if they were gifted to me and I determine that they deserve a place on my shelf because it means I'll either read it again or I would give it to someone I know, then it gets a permanent spot on my shelf unless of course I gift it on and those go over here. So I'm keeping the guest list. Actually, there's like one or two on here that I may need to remove, but I'm keeping the guest list I am probably going to, actually, I'm going to give the Paris apartment back to my sister-in-law because that's who I borrowed it from. But that is why it is on this side of my shelf, along with some of my TBRs. So this side of my shelf includes TBRs, which means it has not been determined yet if they get a permanent spot on my shelves or not. So I guess we'll find out together. Thanks and happy reading. Bye, guys.